The drama from lap one of the all-star race is still heated, but we shouldn't expect any retaliations anymore this upcoming weekend. As in a podcast with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had already mentioned, I told him I might crash him at Charlotte. I'm not gonna crash him at Charlotte. And this is all because NASCAR had shut Stenhouse Jr. down, fined him and his team and Richard Childress has hit back at the driver. Instead of Bush himself, it appears that Stenhouse Jr. has another major reason to reconsider his approach to dealing with someone like Kyle Busch, Richard Childress. Even at the age of 78, the RCR owner's passion remains unwavering. At a recent event at his vineyard in Lexington, he did not mince words when he issued a strong warning to the JTG Daugherty racing driver. When it comes to a quality driver like Kyle Busch, Richard Childress won't tolerate any foolishness. As Richard Childress, NASCAR Hall of Fame team owner, who is 78 years old, is still capable of defending his drivers if necessary. The action began on the first lap of the track when Ricky Stenhouse Jr. hit Kyle Busch's vehicle, and it quickly escalated into a full-fledged fistfight after the race. Stenhouse Jr. had previously been eliminated early in the race and warned during post-crash interviews that the situation may get violent. Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. clashed in the garage area, following the all-star race at North Wilkesboro Speedway. On lap two, Busch and Stenhouse crossed paths on the track. Stenhouse crashed into the wall and was eliminated from the race. Busch was able to continue, but Stenhouse was caught inside the track infield on a track without a tunnel. Forced to sit out the race, he did so but waited for Busch in the garage. Busch got out of his car and marched towards the garage. The two drivers collided, Stenhouse threw a punch, and then everyone, including Stenhouse's father, was swinging punches. During their altercation, it appeared like Bush was going to give the JTG Daughtery Racing driver the benefit of the doubt over the lap one bump, but before he could finish his statement, Ricky Stenhouse delivered a powerful punch to his jaw, sticking to his heated proclamation. The melee fight lasted less than a minute but was viewed all across the world. I felt like Kyle and I have always raced each other really hard back to the Nationwide Series when we were competing for wins week in and week out. Never had any issues, Stenhouse told Fox following the bout. I wrecked him one time at Daytona and he's kind of badmouthed me ever since then. I feel like we get along with each other okay outside the racetrack. I talked to him quite a bit and I'm not sure why he was so mad that I shoved it three wide but he hit the fence and kind of came off the wall and ran into me and I don't know, when I was talking to him he kept saying that I wrecked him. So definitely just built up frustration with how he runs his mouth all the time about myself, but I know he's frustrated because he doesn't run near as good as he used to, and I understand that. We're a single car team over here and working really hard to go out and get better each and every weekend. It is worth noting that during a recent podcast interview, Stenhouse backtracked on his commitment to smash with Bush's vehicle at Charlotte. I told him I might crash him at Charlotte. I'm not gonna crash him at Charlotte, Stenhouse said. Then that just keeps it going, right? So as far as my end goes, I feel like I'm past it. All Bush said afterwards was that his race was eventful. The first lap of the race, we didn't even have water temperature in the car yet and we were wrecking each other off turn two, he said. We were able to continue on, but I'm getting tired of getting run over by everybody. We got into another incident later in the race with the number 54 car. He got his tires hot and checked up early and I didn't check up early, so that was my fault. Bush's team owner discussed the incident during a gathering held at his winery in Lexington, North Carolina, on Tuesday night. Well, you know, it was bad that he was ambushed by those guys, Childress said. If it had just been a straight-up fight, but it was an ambush, well-coordinated. After the incident Sunday night, Stenhouse stated that he intended to revenge and wreck Bush at this week's Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte. Childress stated that if he decides to do so, he is prepared to step up and defend his driver in any way necessary. I've put the word out, Childress said. I got it where I hope it gets to him, Stenhouse, that if he does, I'm kind of old for fighting, but I'll have a different style of fighting and I'll whip his ass. He also said, I would have jumped right in the middle of it. Well, I was starting fighting, I don't fight as fair as I used to, I'm a little older, but Ricky Stenhouse said that he was going to wreck the hash 8 car at Charlotte. Well, when I see him, I'm going to tell him if he does. I'm older but I've just changed my style of fighting. He'll carry a rough pass beat. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has plenty of reasons to be concerned right now. If a man over 60, like Richard Childress, can square up to someone as fierce as Kyle Busch, he would not hesitate to fight Stenhouse Jr. if forced to. It's one thing for an owner to defend their driver after a collision, but it's more difficult in this instance given Childress and Bush's relationship. In an ironic twist, Bush and Childress have their own backstory. 
After a truck series race in Kansas in 2011, Bush was racing hard behind Joey Coulter, who was driving for Richard Childress Racing at the time. Childress was not pleased and proceeded to face Bush. Childress, 65 at the time, took off his watch, handed it over, placed Bush in a headlock, and began delivering punches. NASCAR eventually fined Childress $150,000 back then and placed him on probation for the rest of the season. Childress seemed to have moved on from their 14-year feud, but he can get into the same mindset and not hesitate to do the same to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. On the other hand, Ricky may be concerned not just by prospective NASCAR fines, but also by the severe warning from such a well-known team owner. It's similar of last year, when Ross Chastain received a warning from Rick Hendrick and his performance plummeted dramatically. And now the penalty declarations have also come in, and NASCAR aren't letting Stenhouse get away with his actions from last weekend. NASCAR authorities fined Ricky Stenhouse Jr. $75,000 for punching fellow Cup Series driver Kyle Busch and suspended two crew members from the No. 47 JTG Dougherty Racing Team on Wednesday morning following an argument during Sunday's NASCAR All-Star Race. Officials punished two crew members for numerous races and suspended Ricky's father, Richard Stenhouse, indefinitely for violating the NASCAR Member Code of Conduct, Sections 4.4, D of the NASCAR Rulebook. Clint Myrick, the team technician, was punished for the next eight Cup Series races, through events at Pocono Raceway on July 14th, and tuner Keith Matthews was suspended for the following four Cup Series events, through Iowa Speedway on June 16th. Kyle Busch was not penalized. When you have crew members and family members that put their hands on our athletes, our drivers, we're going to react," said Elton Sawyer, NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition. Sawyer explained why Stenhouse was fined $75,000. I will say when you wait, you know, 198 laps, and you make those decisions that were made, we're going to react to that," he said. There could have been different decisions made. We want the two drivers to be able to have their time to express their differences, but again, once it escalates to where there's been a physical altercation there, again, we're going to react. Sawyer also explained why there was no penalty for Bush, whose retaliation on the track led to Stenhouse hitting the wall on the second lap of the event. If we see something, we have proven over time, that if, we see a driver, intentionally hooking someone in the right rear, we've reacted to that, Sawyer said. We really, as a sanctioning body would, and we do, stay out of the on-track incidents unless we see something that blatantly comes back to us that we need to react to. In this case, we reviewed it, we looked at it, we listened to audio. Again, hard racing but also totally appreciate where the two drivers stand on it. We'll let those guys decide and agree to disagree. What are your thoughts on the fight? Is it fair that Stenhouse got fined $75,000? And should Bush have been fined as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.